for you. Hi there, I'm Candida Steele again, and um, it was lovely to see you all yesterday, and I hope we're ready to have a good conversation today. Uh, Lindsay? And I'm Lindsay Draper. Um, and what I'll tell you today is that I did research to learn who Robert F. Bumpus was, and I wanted to read a bit about your hometown. So that's the only thing that's different about me from yesterday is I know a bit more about your school. Rebecca? Well, good afternoon. Glad to see you back and we're glad to be back. My name is Rebecca Tinder, retired attorney from Charleston, West Virginia and the West Virginia We the People Court. And could you tell us again who you are? Uh, my name is Channing McGuffey. You're good. Um, my name is Lauren Pate. My name is Adam Childers. Great. Well, welcome again, kids. And I'll read the question for you. Uh, we're going to do question two. Um, not much else choice unless we wanted to repeat yesterday's. Uh, political and social movements in American history have been successful because of the right of assembly. President Abraham Lincoln wrote in a letter that, quote, the right of, of peaceable assembly, end quote, is part of the, quote, constitutional substitute for revolution. Do you agree or disagree with President Lincoln? Why? What is the history of freedom of assembly in America? What historical or contemporary evidence is there, if any, that political and social movements have led to significant changes in law or policies? And what limits, if any, should be placed on the right to freedom of assembly? You may begin. War at best is terrible, and this war of ours in its magnitude and in its duration is one of the most terrible. This is stated by President Lincoln. He means that war is hard to go through and war among people is even worse. I agree with President Lincoln that the right of peaceful assembly is part of the constitutional substitute for revolution. For example, in the Dijon versus Oregon case, Aussie.com states, on July 27, 1934, at a meeting held by the Communist Party, Dirk Dijon addressed the audience regarding jail conditions in the county and maritime strike in progress in Portland. While the meeting was in progress, police raided it. After being convicted, Dijon moved for an acquittal, arguing that the evidence was insufficient to warrant his conviction. Dijon got his chance to speak and with that avoided a revolution. This also provides us with the history of freedom of assembly. Martin Luther King Jr. once stated, but somewhere I read of the freedom of assembly, somewhere I read of the freedom of speech, somewhere I read of the freedom of the press, somewhere I read that the greatness of America is the right to protest for right. One example of the history of assembly is that the Stamp Act of Congress passed a Declaration of Rights and Grievances, which claimed that American colonists were equal to all British citizens, protested taxation without representation, and stated that without colonial representation in Parliament, Parliament could not tax colonists. In addition, the colonists increased their non importation efforts, stated by the Library of Congress. There are also pieces of evidence on social movements leading to the changes in laws or policies. There is, an, there is an immense amount of evidence that political and social movements have led to significant changes in laws and policies. One occasion where this happened would be in the 1950s during Montgomery bus boycott. This was a protest that lasted 381 days where black people who were tired of the segregated buses in Montgomery stopped taking the buses and so they carpooled, used, tax, used taxes, taxis and walked to where they wanted to go. Since such a large number of people stopped paying to ride the buses, they lost about 30,000 bus fares a day. Not only that, but the bus, but the boycott gained major coverage by news outlets. In the end, they took the case to the Supreme Court where they ruled that, where they ruled that the segregated buses was unconstitutional under the 14th Amendment in the court case Router v. Gale. This shows that since they protested the buses, they greatly contributed to the desegregation of the Montgomery bus system. Limits of freedom of assembly should exist as there are limits to everything to create balance. In case Edwards versus South Carolina, 187 black students were convicted of a magistrate's court of breach of the peace for peacefully assembling at South Carolina state government 
the court in eight to one decision reversed the criminal convictions of the students. It was clear that in arresting the students, the state went against the rights of the students that include freedom of speech, free assembly, and freedom of to petition for redress of their grievances. Things that should be protected that should not be protected by the right of assembly would include, but not limited to, violence of threat meetups, gatherings that gatherings that clearly pose other immediate threats to public safety, and blocking traffic and freeways or bridges. As you can tell from the foregoing. There are limits to our freedom of assembly. We are ready for your questions. Okay. Um, so I appreciated your talking about the Montgomery bus boycott. Um, can you think of any other examples of successful protest? Successful peaceful protest? Any other time when, when protests have resulted in a change in the law? Because people let them know what they wanted? Or maybe earlier, earlier protests. How about the turn of the century? How about women's suffrage? Let's move on to Dijon. You did uh, mention that in your prepared remarks. In that case, Dijon versus Oregon, the Supreme Court held that freedom of assembly was as important as freedom of speech. Do you agree or disagree and why? Could you restate that real quick? Sure. Um, the court held that freedom of assembly was just as important as freedom of speech. Do you agree, disagree, and why? Um, I agree with that because freedom of assembly and freedom of speech are very similar with in freedom of assembly. You are expressing what you want and in freedom of speech, you are also expressing what you want in your beliefs and opinions. Um, yeah. <laughs> but you say they're just as important. Can't I get along without freedom of assembly? If I have my freedom of speech, I can make my voice heard. Why do I need to get together? Um, you can. Um, I guess with freedom of assembly, with more people, you could have more of an impact on others. And other people will hear what you're saying because it reaches more people. So are there any issues today that you feel strong enough about that you'd be prepared to march, protest, demonstrate, assemble? If you want to stretch that, I'll also take an answer. Are there any things happening in our country today that might make people want to demonstrate? And let me point out to you, for example, that each of you is wearing a mask right now. Um, to I think that a lot of people march for and thing that I personally believe in is like, what you said, people wearing masks, because some people choose not to wear masks. And when they do that, they're not only endangering, right? endangering their self and anyone they come in contact with, like their family and friends, but also other people that they're near. Are they making a statement though? Is that a kind of protest, not wearing a mask? Can you restate the question? Do you think perhaps that um, by not wearing a mask, they might be protesting? Um, Being told to wear a mask? I think sometimes that's the case. And sometimes it's just that they just plain don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Anything else come to mind? Because the mask is, is, it was obviously one of the examples I was thinking of. 
Is there anything else that comes to mind that's happening in our country right now that maybe you as a young person are thinking about or care about or think, you know what, somebody needs to be heard on this? Okay, if there's an, if, if you all are happy people, no, good for you. <laughs> all right, thanks. Um, you quoted um, Edwards versus South, South Carolina, kids in, in Edwards versus South Carolina. Could you tell us a little more about what that case was about? There were 187 black students who were, they were peacefully assembling and they were having a protest and the people, the, the, the state didn't like that. So they, they arrested them. And then the, the court ruled in eight to one that they, they shouldn't protesting? have been arrested. Where were they protesting and what? Uh, they assembled at the South Carolina state government. Um, you talked about uh, the limits uh, in the Edwards case. Uh, what other limits are there on the freedom of assembly? Yeah, or should there be any more limits? On the freedom of well, there's limits to where you can't like have assembly, to where you're planning to like do terrible acts of violence. You can't have an assembly where you're planning to murder people, you can't gathering, you can't have gatherings that clearly pose other immediate threats to public safety, blocking traffic and freeway bridge, uh, bridge with bridges, and then threat meetups is what I put. Okay. So one of the things that sort of jumps out at me, if I remember you all are from Hoover, um, is the whole role of the Children's March in Birmingham um, as part of the civil rights movement. And the reason I bring that up is because it dealt with people your age. Um, is there any very, is there any special role that young people feel or should play in peaceful assembly or in being heard? Is there any different role that young people have? Or do you think you have a role? Um, I think they play a special role because when it's older people, they're trying to like change like their world right now. But when it's younger people, they're trying to make the world better for when they're grown up. OK. Rebecca, you're about to say something or no? Oh, no, I was just waiting for you. Uh, okay. Um, so do you, think, do you think there's a distinction between um, protest that's peaceful and protest that's not so peaceful, that's violent? Saved by the bell. Saved by the bell. Great, thank you. So, well, that was it. You brought up some interesting ideas, the Montgomery bus boycott and um, Edwards versus South Carolina. I hope you had a good time doing this. We've certainly had a nice time talking with you all. And um, I hope you'll go on and be great citizens. I expect you will be. Thank you. It was a pleasure talking with you all. Rebecca? Thank you so much. What great fun. So glad that you were here. Um, you mentioned the Dijon case, which was one that I had already planned to ask a question about. So we were on the same wavelength there. So that's pretty cool. Um, and I agree with the comments of my colleague. Um, you also mentioned the Stamp Act and uh, Edwards versus South Carolina and your um, prepared remarks. And then you um, brought them back in a little bit when we were talking about the um, question and answer. Um, you nailed the um, limitations with um, whether if there's um, violence or threats to safety, um, 
you know, clearly we can't be holding an assembly in the middle of the freeway with traffic going every which way and trying to avoid the people that are assembling. And that's certainly an important concept. I'm hopeful that you will think about what's going on in the world around you, whether it's environmental issues or if it's um, gun rights or if it's um, how you're treated at your school, that you will think about those issues in light of what we've learned today and use them to decide whether or not you want to become an active participant in an assembly and um, making change. And I know that you will do great things. Thank you so much. One of the things that really excites me um, about getting the chance to talk to young people who, and I made a point of telling you that I am from Alabama, that um, you all are living the life that I do. And so that's why I probably identify with you a bit more than a whole bunch of other people. Um, and said, I very much want to, it, I'm thrilled that you're in this program because you're learning some stuff. I want to be sure you know how much you have a voice that not only deserves to be heard, but can be heard. And that's why I, I sort of asked you about the Birmingham Children's Marches, because I wanted to emphasize, please don't assume that Martin Luther King did everything or the Rosa Parks did everything. I don't know if you all know who Claudette Colvin is, but if someday you have nothing else to do, look up 15 year old Claudette Colvin, who was on the bus nine months before Rosa Parks and had been studying the constitution in Montgomery and she was told to move. And she said, I don't believe that's gonna be happening. She didn't say it quite like that, but, but anyway, sort of understand Young people have driven so much of social change in this country. And so I want to be sure that, you know, you've got a lot. When I asked you, you know, the violence, you know, sometimes you all have to be looking at it saying, and I liked, uh, Lauren, your, your comment, though, when I forced you to talk to me about something that you might want to say, let's be honest, the world is kind of the way that me and my generation made it. And if it's going to improve for the better, you know, really we have to rely on you all to do it. And so just kind of keep those things in mind. I've really enjoyed talking to you all and I wish you the very best. Good luck to you, keep doing work.